This will be a quick repair video to try and fix a broken LiPo battery charger on an NRF 52840 Feather Express. My videos are fast paced, but I always post a full write up with notes, pictures, code, and updates on my website. A link will be placed in the description. Here's the defective Feather board. It's connected to a 3.7 volt, 500 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Pressing the reset button lights up the built in NeoPixel LED for a few seconds. This shows the board's getting power from the battery. Next, I'll plug in a 5 volt USB adapter, which should automatically start charging the battery. However, the yellow LED charging indicator does not illuminate. And it's not just a broken LED because I verified the battery is not getting charged with the multimeter. Here's a brand new NRF52840 Feather. Swapping the battery to the new Feather illuminates the NeoPixel as with the other board. But when I plug in the USB power cord, the yellow charging LED lights up and the battery starts charging. Therefore, something's definitely wrong with the first Feather. Let's start with a visual inspection. Here's the Feather board under magnification. I find it easier to read the labels with the colors inverted. There appears to be a possible burn mark on top of a 5 lead SOT23 package. The board also has a distinct smell of burnt semiconductors, so this chip is a very likely culprit. When working with surface mount parts, it can be difficult to identify a chip. This chip only has four letters, K, D, O, 1, which doesn't mean anything to me. There are several resources online for identifying chips, such as the SMD codebook, although it looks like it hasn't been updated since 2015. DigiKey and S manuals also have lookups for SMD markings. I'll post links on my website. I searched online, but I couldn't find a match for KD01. It's probably a packaging code, which I would not be able to decipher without the data sheet. Fortunately, Adafruit provides excellent schematics for all their boards. Here's the one for the NRF52840 Feather. If you're going to design a schematic, this is a great example. All the different board functions are neatly organized and labeled. For example, here's the LiPo charging section. The main component is an MCP73831-2 LiPo charger IC. It's 5-pin, which matches the burnt SOT23 chip. Mauser has them in stock for 50 cents, so it's definitely worth fixing. The circuit's very simple. VDD goes to 5 volt. VBAT goes to the battery with a 10 microfarad decoupling cap. VSS goes to ground. The STAT pin drives an LED status indicator in line with a 1K ohm resistor. The PROG, or programming pin, allows you to set the charging current via the R4 resistor. The board uses a 4700 ohm resistor to set the current to 200 milliamps. Here's a chart from the data sheet. Raising the value of the programming resistor lowers the charging current. My application doesn't require fast charging, so I'll probably try raising the resistor value to 10K to cut the charge current from 200 milliamps to 100 milliamps. Hopefully this might reduce heat and improve longevity. I covered most of the feather with Kapton tape so I don't melt any plastic parts or accidentally remove something. I'll start by heating up the 4.7K ohm resistor with my 858D hot air rework station. In my previous ESP32 repair video, I discussed the 858D in more detail. Looks like the solder's flowing, and the chip comes off with minimal effort. Next, I'll heat the charge controller IC, which is probably already warmed up from removing the nearby resistor. And it also comes off clean and easy. Solder work is used to clean up any leftover solder. When working on surface mount PCBs, I try to drag parallel along the longer axis of a pad as opposed to dragging perpendicular across multiple pads, because I think it's less likely to cause damage. Off camera, I applied solder paste to the pads. I broke the applicator nozzle and made a mess. There's way too much solder, but I think it'll be okay, and if not, I can clean it up with my iron. There's so much paste that I can barely see where to place the chips. Still, there are only seven pads, and surface tension should afford self-alignment. For the record, there's a lot of great videos out there on surface mount soldering, and this is not one of them. I'll fast forward because this is a bit dodgy. Again, too much pace, I did a bad job placing the chips, and I probably need new glasses. Okay, the charge controller did not self-align, but I can manually move it into proper position. Good enough for YouTube. The resistor placement also looks good enough. Despite the clumsy job, I don't see any solder bridges, and it looks good to go. I'll plug in the LiPo battery. The NeoPixel still works, so at the very least, it looks like it didn't cause any new damage. I'll plug in the micro USB cable and... Hey, it's working! I think. The yellow charging LED's on. Let's write a quick CircuitPython program to verify the charge is working. 
An ST7735 color LCD display will provide feedback even if the USB cable is disconnected from the computer. The display uses a SPI interface and can be powered directly from the Feather's 3.3 volt pin, even when running on battery. I'm not going to go into detail on connecting the display because I already made a CircuitPython LCD display tutorial on YouTube dedicated to the subject with a full write-up on my website. The link will be placed in the video description. The NRF5284 Feather board is currently connected to a Raspberry Pi via a micro USB cable. I'll open the Mu editor to create some code. Board is imported to reference the pins on the Feather. From time, sleep is imported. From analog I.O., import analog in, which will be used to read the analog battery voltage. Import display I.O. to implement LCD display functionality. And from the Adafruit ST7735R, import ST7735R to control this specific LCD display. Next, some display I.O. boilerplate is added. There's a reference to the Feather SPI interface, and pins are specified for CS, DC, and reset. Release displays is called to kill any existing display objects, which ensures CircuitPython has access to the display. A display bus is instantiated and passed the board parameters. And an ST7735R display is instantiated. One cool feature of the display I.O. library is with just this basic setup, all REPL output will automatically be piped to the LCD display. Therefore, the Python print statement can now be used to show output on the display. A variable called battery is instantiated to read the LiPo battery voltage. The Feather conveniently exposes one of the NRF52840's analog pins to the battery. It can be read just like any other analog input. Variables min v and max v will track the battery voltage range. The main program loops an infinite while. A variable v is set to the battery value multiplied by the 3.3 volt reference voltage, divided by the 16-bit ADC resolution, and multiplied by 2 for the voltage divider. The analog pins have 16-bit resolution. 2 to the 16th is 65,536. Therefore, battery value represents the battery voltage using a number between 0 and 65,535. This is converted to voltage by multiplying by the reference voltage of 3.3 volts and dividing by the resolution. If we go back to the schematic and take a look at the JST PH LiPo input section, there's a voltage divider comprised of two 100K ohm resistors between V bat and ground. The analog voltage measured by the board's battery pin is at V div. Since the resistors are identical, the measured voltage equals one half of the actual battery voltage. This is done because the LiPo's battery voltage typically exceeds the 3.3 volt reference voltage which is the maximum that the analog pins on the feather can tolerate. Next, the battery voltage V is compared to the minimum and the maximum values, which are updated if necessary. Finally, a print statement is used to output the battery voltage, along with the minimum and maximum range. Thanks to Display.io, the print output will automatically be sent to the LCD display. The loop sleeps for two seconds and repeats. Let's check the code. Good job, no problems found. Click Save. I called the program code.py, so it'll automatically run on boot. Here's a breadboard with the ST7735 LCD connected to the Feather. Off camera, I removed the USB cable connecting the board to the Pi. I'll plug in the LiPo battery. The Feather boots, and there's output on the display. The battery is around 3.7 volts, which is about the nominal voltage. A fully charged LiPo should be closer to 4.2 volts. I'll plug the micro USB cable back in. The charging LED comes on, and the battery jumps up a little to 3.8 volts. I set the breadboard aside for over an hour, and the battery is now at a little over 4.1 volts. I unplugged it when I moved it, so I reset the minimum maximum range. I'll unplug the USB cable. The battery is holding close to 4.1 volts. Looks like the charger is fixed. I hope you liked this video. You can support this channel by subscribing, leaving a like, and sharing. Thanks for watching.